Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today and welcome to this conference about GEM 2025 strategy. We are broadcasting from a GEM iFlex room and we do respect all the norms as COVID is concerned. We will spend about an hour together. First, Jean-François Fiorina, Julie Perrin-Allo, Federico Pini and Jean-Philippe Renard will present GEM 2025 strategic plan. Then we will take time to answer your questions. To help me today, Evin Gray will operate the room and it takes agility. Chelsea Choppy will moderate the chat and your questions. Our first speaker today is Jean-François Fiorina, Vice Dean and Programs Director. Jean-François, c'est à toi. Merci. Hello, everybody. I don't know if I have to say good morning or good afternoon or even good evening for some of you because uh, you are spread all over the, the world. But uh, it's great to be with you today to, to share this uh, new strategic plan of GEM. You know that GEM is like a company and we, we need to define a strategic plan. Uh, we, we, we have some before and there are always a five years period. And for us, uh, it was very important to share to share it with you uh, because uh, <coughs> you know that uh, the alumni are, are part uh, of GEM, they are wonderful assets. And, and for us, it's very important uh, that you have this information, that uh, you give your feedback, and, and of course that uh, you help us uh, in implementation this uh, strategic plan. Um, defining. Uh, a strategic plan for business school and for GEM is not so easy. It's not a question of two or three people sitting in a table and say, okay, what will be the school in the next five years? No, it has been a collective process, including a lot of stakeholders, the staff, of course, uh, and we had a wonderful day, it was in November, November 19, with all collaborators, uh, faculty, non-faculty, discussing about many, many subjects. Uh, we have also interviewed the students. Maybe some of you uh, have been also interviewed and participated to, to this process. Uh, we also have the feedback, the information and discussion with the corporate world. That's very important as a business school that uh, we, we know what uh, companies are expected from a, a business school. And, and of course, uh, the opinion of our shareholders, the Chamber of Commerce of Grenoble. Uh, so a collective process and uh, taking uh, in account a lot uh, of things. First, and that's very important for, for GEM, our legitimacy and trajectory since the creation of the school in, in 1984, um, with an historical position uh, around the management technology, uh, innovation and entrepreneur. Uh, again, we are a school uh, which can say local, meaning that uh, we are part of the Grenoble ecosystem and we know that Grenoble is very well known abroad for its research centers, for the School of Engineering, for technology, it's usually considered as a Silicon Valley. Um, and for, for that, it's very global, meaning that uh, we are uh, an international business school targeting international students, international companies competing in a worldwide market, <laughs> and that's very important for us. Um, I don't know, uh, but maybe some of you have seen this uh, fantastic film of Visconti, and in which inside uh, one of the, the, the actors say, uh, Nothing has to change, but everything has to change. And I think that was the goal uh, when, when we begin to discuss on this strategy. To say we are a business school in our ecosystem, globally oriented, and uh, we need to capitalize and uh, go <laughs> further on these steps. Uh, we are also taking uh, into account the understanding of the vision of what, will, what could be a leading business school. You know that uh, GEM uh, is very innovative. We have uh, also been uh, pioneering in many, many fields, meaning that we need to be very active and proactive in, in, uh, in many fields. And we, we need to pursue uh, on this side. Um, we also have taken uh, into account the health crisis. COVID uh, is a fantastic <laughs> challenge. Uh, and uh, we usually admit that uh, in fact, 
the COVID uh, has accelerated all our thinkings we had before in terms of online education, managing school relations with students, relations with companies. That has accelerated many, many things. Uh, and we, we need to take this in, into account. Uh, I have written it many, many times. I think that schools would be leader after the crisis will be schools that could manage in the same times this crisis and prepare <coughs> the futures. Of course, we have taken into account all the major routes, sometimes <coughs> positive, sometimes negative. There are a lot. Just to say the, the main, uh, the first is uh, the ESG goals, meaning environment, social and government goals. That's very important. Uh, we have strong expectation from the students that uh, we have content on this uh, side. We have also expectation from the from companies. Uh, we have also taking in account or uh, as a major change, the increasing competition between business school. Uh, and for that, I don't think that uh, French business schools are, com are our competitors. Of course they are, but uh, our main competitors now are uh, ASEAN business school, Chinese business school, Australian business school. And, and we have also said that uh, we have new competitors. I'm sure you have heard about Ed21, about Coursera, and uh, there are new actors that uh, disrupt the market. Uh, and for us, the question is uh, how to work with, with these new actors, because they are both competitors, new partners, and, and we need to find a new, new models. We have also, as a major change, taking in, uh, into account the price value and the expectation from the students. You know that uh, you pay uh, fees uh, when you enter to a business school and, and in gym, and we, we, we know that now you want to know why uh, do you pay, what is for, uh, and what are the consequences that we, 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 you want <coughs> to, to have uh, <clears throat> some information <coughs> about that. Of course, all the corporate new expectation in terms of defining new business model, new organization, uh, new way of working. Of course, as a major change, the geopolitics, the Brexit, it's changing a lot of things in the international strategy of many business schools. Um, the commercial war between the China and the United States have an impact on, on our strategy. We have also a lot of reforms in France, and I, I, I won't tell it uh, as a major change. We have also all new jobs that are going to be created in the future. Uh, we have now students in gen studying, and that will apply or will have a new will have a new job in company jobs that not exist anymore. And, and we have in the same time students that are studying. They want to be uh, for they, they want. They, they have a dream or professional career they, they want, but uh, maybe these jobs won't uh, exist when they will be graduated. And uh, last change, uh, all the development of technology, and by this I mean uh, artificial intelligence, blockchain, cybersecurity, big data, uh, that has a, a, an impact on, th on 360 degrees uh, in terms of teachings, in terms of pedagogy, in terms of managing the school, in terms of content. So, as you can see, a lot of change that uh, we have to take in, into account to define this new strategy to better satisfy the needs of the companies and students. Um, and uh, let's say the, the last point that we have taken into account that's very important is uh, giving sense to what we do. Uh, uh, GEM is a specific business school. We have an entity. We have a specific spirit uh, that allows us to, to have this position in, in Europe now. Uh, and we, we need to, to work on this strategy. So to, to, to give sense to everybody, to stakeholders, to all the stakeholders, and to say, okay, we are in the best business school. Thank you for that. So now, strategic de GEM. what will be... What will be... Or what is the strategy, uh, our ambition, uh, as you can see on the slide, to be recognized as one of the most innovative and influential schools in the world. 
working on issues of ecological, economic, and societal transition. And you can see that for that, technology is the core uh, component. And uh, our vision to have initiated based on the model of the large international technology platform of Grenoble, again, the link to our territory, a new international standard for business school, a business lab for society, meaning that, uh, again, there is a progression comparing the previous plan, where uh, <coughs> moving to a business school, to a school for business, for society. Uh, if everything success, uh, and I'm sure we will do it, uh, what your school looks like in 2025? Three campuses in France, two in Grenoble. Uh, you all know now our headquarters, Rue Pierre Sema, but uh, we have, uh, since 18 months, a new campus, which is Gem Labs, where we are right now, which is two tram stations away from Pierre Sema, with a lot of labs, uh, with a lot of experimentation units, uh, and which is what we think of the School of the Futures. Uh, we will have one campus in Paris, so in Paris we have a progression. Some of you maybe have studied Rue du Ranelag, then we moved uh, one year ago to Rue Dido in the 14th uh, arrondissement of Paris in the southwest, uh, and we will move to the southeast in Paris in 2023 with a total modern campus of 6,000 6, square meter foot. And we plan to attract 2,000 students uh, in our different degrees. We will have uh, an additional campus, which will be totally virtual, which will be the twin campus. And uh, I won't tell any details on that. Jean-Philippe will do that later. 10 locations for the transcontinental park uh, track. Uh, and I will tell you about more for the internationalization. 60,000 alumni, one international alliance. 10,000 students, we are now 8,000, so it means that we are going to increase uh, the number of our programs or the size of our cohorts. And of course, for all these students, they will all have an international experience and they will be engaged on the major fields of GEM. If I post you, uh, GEM in 2025, it will be five researchers, on our DNA, uh, two, uh, four main growth le uh, levels, of course, programs, executive education, the GEM Digital de uh, Twin and international. We want to be wanted amongst the 25 first or top 25 business school in Europe. That's very important. Again, as I told you, we are playing on the global market and we want to be one of these main player. <coughs> budget of 88 million euros. We have now a budget of 60, uh, 57 million euros. So you can see the progress, uh, which will be very important uh, in terms, and if I post you on financial terms, um, an investment capacity of 5 million euros, 200 uh, faculties, 30 major corporates, mainly on the tech industry. And, and for that, our shareholders plans to invest 32 million euros and to attract new shareholders. So as you can see, we are very ambitious, uh, very dynamic, a lot of projects. But uh, again, and it's very important because this, this is the gem spirit. Uh, it's not a a new strategy, it's just the, the continuation of what we did. And uh, uh, in the last few minutes have, uh, if we can compare of the pre with the previous plan, as you can see the previous plan, the objectives and the ambition was to be a brand of excellence with an identity in NTI, we have, it's done. To evolve from a business school to a school for business for society, we succeeded. Uh, we are now well known for the impact. We are the, the first business school that said that impact is very important. Uh, and by impact, uh, it says we contribute to public debates. Uh, we have action to all our communities. And, and we have what I usually say, we are a business school inside the city, 
not only focus on business figures or facts, but we are more than a business school, a school that put that strain and uh, graduate people who are very engaged to the society. And so now the next step, uh, so Backward. Backward. Uh, <laughs> the next step, which is totally logical, we want to be a business lab for society uh, through research and development for management, education and practice around the world. You, you see uh, <coughs> behind the idea of a proactive business school that could be an example for a lot of business schools. Again, when I saw what we did, uh, we have an impact. We have been pioneering in many, many, many fields. And uh, I think uh, we, know we need to pursue it in this field. So concretely now, uh, for our major projects, the first one is quite difficult to translate it, but uh, Julie will explain you what it is, the Société à Mission. Then Federico will present you the Team Live Academy. Jean-Philippe for the Gem Digital Twin, and I did some teasing uh, because I mentioned this uh, virtual campus many times uh, in this presentation, and I will come back for the internationalization. So now I will ask Julie, Federico, and Jean-Philippe to present this, this project. Because uh, I don't think that all the alumni know you, if you can introduce yourself at the beginning and say who you are and what you do in this fantastic uh, school. Thank you very much, Jean-Francois. Our next speaker is Julie Perrin-Allo. If you have any question about Jean-Francois' presentation, please use the chat and there will be asked at the end of the conference. Julie, it's up to you now. Okay, here I go. So greetings to everyone and uh, thank you for all of that introduction. So I am Julie Pirallo and um, my responsibilities include uh, everything that's related to quality, all of our accreditations and certifications. I do strategic planning and I'm also in charge of the, um, the teams that support our international programs. So that kind of runs from marketing recruitment all the way through to mobility, et cetera. Um, and also within the team, the quality team, we have a group that is in charge of everything that's related to sustainability. Hence my, um, my being here today because I'm one of the the, the project leaders to, uh, for this new project, which is the Société à Mission. And like Jean-Francois said, difficult to translate. I think we could loosely compare it to what is called in the English speaking world, a benefit corporation. Not exactly the same, but I'm gonna just give you a few elements about what this is and why we're doing it. So um, I think it's important to say that this isn't something that's really a new development for us in the sense that GEM has been extremely engaged around the question of sustainability in its broadest sense since around 2009. In fact, we were really one of the first French schools to get um, so active on this subject and to do a lot of things. I think, again, I come back to what Jean-Francois said about being a pioneer. I think we've really had pioneer status around this. So um, today in 2021, I mean, we've had, we've got a lot of years under our belt now, quite a bit of experience and a lot of actions and activities that we've done. Um, all of the sustainability is really managed by two people today that in a team that we call the, the sustainability hub, but what is interesting about our model is that behind them, there's what we have, what we call the sustainability committee, which is composed of around 100 people every year that are from um, their administrators, their faculty, their students, and they all come together in a group of work groups to really work around on all of the different subjects related to this. So the reason I say that is because, you know, GEM is really very engaged and, and we didn't need to uh, assume this new sort of uh, statutory um, Société à Mission to be engaged, but in a sense, it's sort of the next step for us. So um, 
when we decided to do this, and it's important to know that this is a statutory declaration that we made. However, it doesn't change the nature of what we are. We remain in EESC as we've always been. However, what it does do is it really creates a series of, um, I would almost say ob obligations for us in terms of the actions that we're going to uh, move forward on and the way that we're going to report on those actions. And we felt that this was a really uh, important way to bring together a lot of our stakeholders with us to, to formalize what is important for us and how we wanna go forward on it. And also to give ourselves a bit of a challenge because what will happen within this, and just perhaps a little parentheses here, it's a law in France that was passed in 2019 that they called the Loi Pact that created this um, status for schools and made it possible, schools, excuse me, all companies actually, made it possible for um, a company to declare this and then within it, to um, have to follow a certain number of obligations. So there have been a number of French companies that have already engaged down this route. And actually, GEM is the first um, business school, Grande École, that has done it. So um, anyway, so that law, that law created the opportunity for us. Now, as I said, it creates some obligations for us that we find quite interesting and also helps us to work in a way that um, brings in more of even our external stakeholders. And one of those things is, is that we're committing, we're creating a, um, a, 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 what we're calling an impact committee. And this impact committee will meet several times a year and follow progress that we're going to, to, to make on, a, on several different things. And I'm gonna talk about how we're structuring that in just a minute. Um, the Think Pack Committee is going to be led by Olivier Bloom, who is one of our um, uh, alumni, um, and he is the Chief Sustainability Officer for Schneider Electric. He's um, based in Hong Kong, and Schneider itself is a company that's been uh, recognized by Corporate Knights for its um, for the work that it's doing around sustainability as well. So Olivier and several external members, so people from academia, from probably some of our partner companies, et cetera, will join together with a few people from inside the school. And this group will follow our actions across time. They will do yearly reporting. They'll have to write an annual report on what we've accomplished. And then every 18, 18 months, an external organization that's completely independent from GEM will come in and audit us on what we've done. So it's quite, uh, there's quite a structure around this. It's quite serious for us. And I think it's really quite good for us that we have that external push to keep us moving and to also, like I said, bring people in with us. So just a couple uh, things here, and uh, I'm looking at the slide that's up now to give you an idea of the process that we're in. So we had to, to become a Société à Mission, you have to declare what they call a raison d'être. And you can see that written at the bottom of the slide. Now this raison d'être, we pulled it from our mission and vision. So it's very much aligned with what we've already done strategically and how we position ourselves and what we want to do over the next five years. Then behind the raison d'être, we had to uh, declare a number of objectives that we wanted to focus our energy on for the next five years. And what we did is um, we've had a, what we call a sustainability manifesto that many of you, if you're fresh graduates, um, you may have already signed as students. It's something that our students and our staff sign every year and it, it, it's sort of our declaration around sustainability. We rewrote it in 2020 and decided on five areas that we wanted to really focus on. And those are associated with the UN sustainability, uh, sustainable development goals. And we decided to take those five areas and use them as really the sort of the red thread within the Société à Mission. And you can see those listed here. So they're ethics and integrity, diversity and gender equality, inclusion and education for all, economic peace, and, and of course, the ecological transition, uh, everything associated with climate change. 
So what will happen for us is that we are creating um, a, a roadmap around these five objectives. We're inventorying all the work that we're already doing in those areas, and then we're planning on our objectives, what we want to accomplish against all of those things over the next five years. And then we'll be working on those things yearly and doing the reporting that I mentioned earlier. Now, just a couple examples of things that we're, we want to do. For example, we've set ourselves the objective to become carbon neutral by 2030. So that means a lot of study around our carbon footprint, which we've been doing for seven years, several years, but also thinking about carbon compensation, how we internationalize differently, how we travel differently, et cetera. So lots of work around that. We're also doing a lot of work around opening up, creating greater diversity in the institution and ensuring that students with different kinds of needs have access to GEM, whether that be um, students with disabilities. We already have a program for um, a number of ref refugees that come in and are integrated into our programs. Um, there, so there's a lot of work done there as well. Um, there's also uh, uh, work done in uh, the area of pedagogy, looking at how we can introduce all of these areas more firmly into our curricula. Our students have formulated a really clear request that all of the climate change elements be brought in more explicitly into the curricula. So we're working on that. And I can go on and on. There are many, many examples of the things we're doing. And we will be reporting on that. And for anyone, any of our, um, our alumni who are interested in new, knowing more, there will be ways to link in and to check up on all of this. So basically, just to wrap all of that up and let someone else um, talk to you, I think that I really I think this is an exciting development for us. I think it creates a bit of pressure and, and a good challenge, but I think that really we'll be moving forward on things and, and giving visibility as we wanted to do. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Julie. We're back here in Gem Labs and your next speaker is, our next speaker is Ardeen Fede Coppini. Good day, everyone. Uh, I'm Federico Pini. For the people that don't know me, I am the dean of uh, faculty. That means that I am somehow the guy that is supposed to be the manager of all the professor and the faculty. I'm here even in uh, my, I could say, work as a professor of information system. Uh, therefore, I've been tasked to somehow, uh, together with the director of the research, Clemens Ruling, and the director of innovation, Sylvie Blanco, to somehow be propositive and advance the team life. This is effectively what we have worked up until today. First of all, a word of reassurance. Um, we are not changing jam upside down. On the contrary, we are building on our essence, on what we actually are. Not only the MTI, the Management Technology and Innovation Leadership, was recognized by our main stakeholders and on the French market, but it was internationally recognized. However, as all the resources, they are very often eroded by competition. We cannot afford this. So we needed a new way, a new MTI, to indeed provide a response to the paradigmatic shift that our society is undergoing. A paradigmatic shift that goes from a business transition, the very way we produce wealth, the very sense of what wealth is, and the essence of an ecological and energetic translation and a transition. Everything is changing, right? Therefore, we had to innovate. How we innovated? We moved from one paradigm to another. That's why we introduced the team life as an overall ambition. Team Live, and let's say this acronym, Team is very the idea of technology, innovation, and management. Live is about, clearly there is a joke into the live thing. Yeah, because we don't want the, this action to be static. We want it to be alive. We want your participation. We want this to be a platform for innovation. With Live, we mean learning. We want this to be a learning environment. We want impact because we want this to be an impactful action. We want it bringing and be heralding our very own value. 
of jam, of engagement, and this is indeed the, the last word, that means that our students require and ask us engagement. Our society requires us to be harbinger of value and engagement. And this is where we want to go. And these are the elements that you want to bring forward. So what is a team life is, first of all, an ambition, an ambition to create talent, an ambition to create management that are massively engaged in their society and that they know what they're talking about is not about an academic foof. On the contrary, is absolutely something real, rooted in what we are. I just give you an example. Our idea for the transition from MTI to Team Life is, uh, first of all, to change the very way we relate with innovation and value creation. The idea is not just to look behind or just the profit or the possible fallout of a technological innovation on the bottom line but overall on the budget of our society, how the innovation that we bring, the business that we do impact our society. This is our engagement and we need the talented managers to handle such a transition. And this is based on our curiosity and our appetite for technology management. At the same time, we need uh, that uh, much more the international context, seeing that GEM is global, it's great, but who doesn't mean? It means that we need to be engaged where these changes are happening, where technology is changing, where technology is reshaping the society, where we can get the first signals of a possible change, interpret it with our value, with the eyes of what the gem is and the engagement of our students, and to see what are their implications. We need our stakeholders, we need you, dear alumni. We needed this network to grow. We needed this network to be alive. And the idea is that all this engagement, the idea that this mission is constant, pass through a total redefinition of what is MTI. MTI is for the life. <laughs> In the sense that we want a commitment to stay along the time. We want that you could always jump into our sessions, our classes, our teachings, the idea, if you want a stupid idea, is Jam may look like a subscription. You sign up for Jam, you can always jump into it. And Jam will be always there for you and for training our students. We need to foster the link between Jam and the industry into an international context too. And this can only be done with you. So Jam Live will be a platform, will be a totally new platform that builds on our communities, on our stakeholders, local and international, in order to provide something new. In which sense this is something new? We want to leverage what we already can do with smart objects, with big data, uh, with uh, absolutely energy, real-time money. We have plenty of projects going on in the school. What we want to do is indeed uh, to experiment to put our students in a context where they can effectively experiment and be immersed. So we want their hands to be dirty. It's not an academic stuff, as I told you, it's a way to learn by doing. And this is something that's always been in our DNA. Now we have to bring it to a scale. So students that are from Jam need to be recognized for who they are and the speciality they have. Yes, they have dirty hands, they know business and they know technology. This is our ambition for team life. So how can we make this? So what could be the guiding principle behind, uh, uh, behind this? Uh, can I advance or just up on the slide? You want this? Yeah, just to move to the, to the next one. So how can we uh, reach this objective, uh, very simply put, into three core guideline principles? We wanted to, first of all, uh, bring the challenges into uh, the uh, core of our teaching. So we needed the challenges of business and society brought into it. And this is effectively what we are looking for. Bring us your challenges. Bring us uh, your problems. This is what we want. We want to create immersed environments, uh, really a sort of trajectory and universes that inspire people. This is fundamental. The engagement passed through the inspiration. And we need the problem of society to 
to inspire our students, the problem of business to inspire our people, to make them work on things that have a sense, not that are just a knowledge, but have a sense for doing. This makes better and more engaged and talented people. And we absolutely need these gender challenges to come here. Another element we need to somehow dare to play and dare to let these people play with even topics that are difficult or strange or limit in order to understand it. I'll give you an example for this. Imagine that uh, we want to study and let students understand the potentials of artificial intelligence concerning facial recognition or eventual sentiment analysis through facial recognition. Now, in the traditional MTI, these things would have just been, you know, we seek a main market, a core market for this, we market the products, we have a solution, let's, let's do it. The problem for us here with the new MTE is first is to see this in real setting, which you are first. And the second, on the contrary, we relate to, okay, but what are the societal impact? Ethically, is this acceptable? What people can do with such a technology? What or how the law should evolve? Where is the business? How can the business trajectory evolve from here? So a very different kind of questioning that is based on the real experience, not just on the concept that we have artificial intelligence or because people took two slices of code, put into a program and say, oh, look, this is artificial intelligence. This is not what we're interested in making. This is not what is done. And then the idea is that all of this relates to the transition that we just discussed, the energetic transition, the social transition, the economic transition, and clearly the environmental transition that we are facing. We have to be engaged in solving real big problem. This is the very essence of what is gem. And to do all of this, we will rely on very simple things. On you, <laughs> students, on you, uh, network, on our resources, our professors, our adjunct professor that are absolutely wonderful in bringing new blood and new into our faculty. On our trusted partner, we already have it, you've seen, we're already 30, but we have to develop. We have to go even farther to find partners that are committed like us into this new vision of what technology is for our society. Our pedagogy, yes, we leverage the innovativeness in our pedagogy. Why? Because you see where we are. Already iFlex has been quite disruptive on the French market. We assured together the best pedagogy in France during this pandemic. At the same time, we experiment. And this is the key word. We will immerse people into experiments, real life cases that I, we aspire to have you bring here and be the jam there for you. And our study and community, clearly, if alumni are the thing, people that eventually can help us to bring in, we need even alumni, to, yeah, sorry, our students to become the next alumni. And so our students are our force, our students are the talent that we need and they are to develop. To finally hand that uh, effectively, there is always an investment, right? And yes, even the infrastructure. But the infrastructure in this case will be hybrid. It's not just an infrastructure made of uh, solid rock or steel or bricks. No, 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 no. It's an infrastructure that is both physical and virtual. Indeed, Team Life will be a platform, physical, virtual, that can follow us, can engage us, can train us, can actually show our commitments. And uh, let's say, this is uh, if team life is our ambition, team life will become our playground where we'll just bring a better gem to every one of our stakeholders. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Federico, for this very dynamic speech. Our <laughs> next speaker is back in Paris, Jean-Philippe Ronard. Jean-Philippe, are you with us right now? Yes, I can see you. You will talk about Gem Digital Twin and you will have to do it very quickly because Federico took a lot of time to explain what Team Life is. Up to you, Jean, Jean Philippe. Do you mean that Federico is a bit talkative? I didn't know that. That's um, quite a surprise. <laughs> something like that, yes. That's an old no. joke. <laughs> I'm kidding, don't worry. <laughs> well, Jean Philippe, well, I'm, the, I'm Professor at Gem, I'm uh, the former faculty dean. And I am now in charge of uh, Paris campus, I mean the physical campus and of uh, <clears throat> Gem Digital Twin, uh, which is, a, digital, which is a, a virtual campus. Well, what is the virtual campus? 
I think that you all know those famous open world where uh, <clears throat> many players can interact, can play, can move freely, can discuss uh, together. What we want to do with the virtual campus is just a transposition of such uh, an open world in an academic environment. We want to build an academic environment in some kind of video game open world. It's not completely new. Uh, we tried, we made some experiments uh, 10 years ago with uh, Second Life, and we made many different experiments over the years. But what we know now is that the technology is now ready to build a real campus life online. And that is one of our object objectives. Well, why to do that? First of all, there is a strategy. Uh, issue. Uh, I won't discuss it uh, since uh, Jean Francois already did it. I will just focus on two main reasons. The first one is a pedagogical one. During the last year, we had to teach online. We had to learn how to teach online. It was a success. I think that it was a real success since over the year our students uh, had real lessons and uh, they, they, uh, they clearly uh, managed to, uh, to, to attend their, their courses. The main issue is that while doing that, we completely sacrificed the campus life, the social life uh, which is associated to, uh, <clears throat> to our study. As you know, a campus is not only a place to, uh, to learn. A campus is a place to learn social codes. A campus is a place to build a network. And a campus is also a place to have fun. It's very important. It is part of the, of the learning and of the teaching system. We need to have some social interaction with colleagues, with friends, and so on, in order to be in, in such a mood uh, which is uh, <clears throat> adequate for, uh, for learning. So we need to give our students, even online students, a social life, a campus life. Apart from the strictly teaching moment, they need to have some time to interact, uh, to build uh, their network and so on. It's very, very important for us. So this is a pedagogical reason, and it is, this is, of course, the most important reason for us to build a virtual campus, since we need to give our online students a complete uh, experience. The second reason is, of course, a business one. As you know, Jem um, has some advance in uh, online teaching, and we have to take advantage of this advance. We have to take advantage of uh, our know-how on online teaching. We have to be present in the uh, online teaching market and we have to develop new products. We have, to, we have to develop a new offer. We have to develop new programs. We have to develop new certificates and so on in order to develop ourselves. Since as a company, we have to make new, we have to develop new business. So two reasons, first of all, a pedagogical one, in the broad term, in the broad sense of the term, I mean pedagog pedagogical and social life and uh, a business reason. So how to do that? We are a school. I mean that we have some uh, physical facilities and we don't have the capability to fight against pure players like Open Classroom, Google and so on. So we have to build a virtual campus which uh, which will take advantage of uh, our physical equipment. We have to build some kind of continuum between the virtual campus and uh, the physical uh, campus. So to put it briefly, what we want to do is to build a general interface for all our campus. We have to build a place where every student, online or not, will be able to interact and to work with any other student. We have to build a place where every student will be able to take advantage of our physical uh, equipment. For example, we are now uh, doing this presentation from a high flex room. Some of us are, uh, I'm in Paris and you are uh, spread all over the world. Other uh, people are uh, directly in the room. This interface between virtual and physics will be part of uh, our uh, future uh, campus.
a place where uh, every student will also be able to take advantage of our digital resources. I mean, uh, edtech and, uh, and so on. I think that in the coming year, we will be able to build a place where the transition between the physical and the virtual and the virtual world will be a natural part of student life, of student experience. To put it briefly at the end, what we want to do is a global campus where all our students, online or not, will be part of the intellectual and social adventure we have to give them. So I did it very briefly. Thank you. We talked about Société à Mission. We talked about the new MTI, which will be called Team Live. We talked about the new campus of GEM Digital Twin. Now it's time to talk about internationalization. And Jean-François Fiorina will explain to us what are James' goal in that field for the next year. Yours, sorry. Thanks, Isabella. Hello again. Uh, so my colleagues have been very too cultured, so I, I don't have a lot of time because I, I want that we have some exchange with you that uh, uh, have your comments or, or, or maybe your, your questions. International have uh, always been uh, one part of the, our DNA. Uh, and when the school was created in 1984, the, the, the fundator said that uh, uh, GEM must be international. And we, we have been the first business school uh, to have specific degrees for international students. We have been one of the most business school to open uh, uh, off-site campus. So we, we want to pursue and uh, say that uh, we, we must stay international and uh, there, there is no doubt no, about that. What does it mean uh, being more international? It, it means um, three, three things. The first one um, is increase the uh, international experience of our students and to extend it to all students. Uh, so we are going to have <coughs> new partners we are going to create new transcontinental tracks for the, the program Grand École. So what is a transcontinental track? Uh, it is a parkour for expertise, uh, which is done and teach uh, amongst one partners. We have one uh, in finance uh, in, in New York with Space University. We have one in geopolitics at George Washington University. We have one on entrepreneur and uh, sustainability, sustainability uh, in, in Bangkok. We have one in Cambridge for international business. So we want to increase uh, these inter transcontinental tracks to 10 and they will <coughs> be an adequation of our DNA. Uh, with tech, with geopolitics, and the next one will, is going to open uh, is a transcontinental track in Georgia, Tbilisi, to uh, focus on uh, Silk Road. The second point is we are going to create an international alliance, including 10 innovative ecosystems in the world. Uh, at the beginning, when I introduced the, the new strategy, I said that uh, GEM is integrated in its, in its ecosystem, which is very important. I forgot to mention that uh, Grenoble is one of the third uh, worldwide ecosystems for the others, just to say that the level uh, in, in which uh, we are competing, we have one in Milano, one in Tampere in Thailand, we have one in Singapore, of course, we have uh, we have two in Japan, we have the Silicon Valley, Austin or Boston, the United States, Guadalajara, Mexico, uh, <coughs> and so on. So we want to make an alliance with 10 of them to do some research to have some uh, teachers and faculty mobility and to produce a tour for to our students, immersive experiences. And then you can see uh, the, the, the importance of immersive uh, and you have uh, the information uh, with uh, Federico. And the third point, which is very important, uh, we are going to have a huge international communication campaign say that GEM is international. And of course, uh, I hope that uh, you will help us to introduce GEM in your company, uh, to your friends, maybe to give us some advice uh, or, or some counsels uh, that uh, help us to be very international. At the end, and uh, it will be the link between with the Société à Mission, international is uh, the, at the center of the, of the school, no doubt about that. 
Anyway, uh, we know that there are many, many questions concerning the, the ecologic transition. Uh, we are in an industry in which we travel a lot. And uh, what we have decided is that for every international action, we will take into account to define or to accept uh, the consequences of, the, uh, of this action on our carbon footprint. So that's it. As you can see, we are very ambitious, or still ambitious, a lot of ideas. We have, uh, let's say, a good futures and uh, uh, with uh, the possibility to increase the notoriety of the school. But again, it could be done with you. And uh, I hope that uh, you will help us and again give us some concepts that uh, can make, let us progress in, in many, many fields. Thank you very much uh, for your, your presence. It's now time for questions or comments. Uh, we have, we said that we have one hour, so we don't have a lot of time left. Uh, anyway, we will took all the comments and the questions, and if we do not answer, uh, we will answer it by uh, through a document. Okay. Isabel or Chelsea, also. Thank you very much, Jean-François. So you will have now uh, a, a a, a, an eye on what's really a, a Jem Iflex room. I was seated there, and you could hear me, and then I walked all the way here oh to talk God. to you. And so you, you, are, you were backstage. So as you may uh, know, yesterday we ran this very same conference in French. François Leccia, director of James Corporate Relations, made a presentation about our network's future. For information and to explain the context, the GEM alumni team, which I am in charge of, is under François's responsibility. Uh, to make it simple, is my manager. He really apologizes, but it was not possible for him to join us today. He put me in charge of translating his words and sharing them with you. So let's talk about our network in 2025. His first point was very clear. As GEM alumni, we do have an important role to play in the GEM 2025 strategic plan. Then he insisted the school is aware that the relationship with every member of the GEM alumni network is an asset. And it was told and told by all the speakers before me. Since 1984, the network evolved, and that's pretty normal. After all, we're a young school. Today, and to prepare tomorrow, we need to make an adjournamento, that is uh, to say a stop, to take time to rethink and change the design of our network. The world is changing as every structure we need to adapt. To conduct this change, it's important for us to talk with you about everything and without taboo. Our relationship with you is important for the school, but it's also our mission to be at your side. And if you want, need, ask to, we will be there to support your careers and all your businesses. To conclude, he talked about interconnections, which lead to power. I will explain. Our network will be powerful if, and only if, we succeed in combining it with other networks and ecosystems. That is exactly where he wants to lead us. He finished by saying he would get back in touch with you soon to continue the dialogue and work together to build not only GEM's future, not only our network's future, but your futures too. So now it's time for questions. Chelsea, do we have any questions from our alumni? So yes, we absolutely do. Uh, I don't have my microphone on. Can anyone hear me in the, in the room? It's fine? Yeah. Okay. So we have several questions. Um, Adrit had several. Some of them may have already been responded to. So let me know if I'm not clear about them. How are the expectations from students being balanced with the need to fill seats in the programs? Would anyone like to take that question? <laughs> Could you say it again? Yes, absolutely. So the, obviously the students have expectations. Okay. How are we filling the expectations from the students and filling seats in the classroom? Obviously they're both priorities for us. So how do we balance that? Um, we, we have different committees. Uh, we have pedagogical committees, we have academic committees, uh, we have also committee program. 
uh, and we have also a faculty which is organized through uh, different departments or thematic departments. And this is the combination of all that that produce the, the results uh, because we, we have to take in, into account what are the expectations of the students, of course, what are the expectations of company, and, and we, be, we, we must be aware that uh, we train for the companies and that students must be employable for the companies uh, and that's for, for that they, they need to have some basic in management, a specialization, a lot of experience uh, and a lot of skills and the difficulty is that now we have more and more skills, we have soft skills, we have leadership skills, geopolitical skills, data skills um, and, and now we will have all the skills which are linked to the new way of working, uh, meaning uh, know how to, uh, to work online, how to manage online and, and so on. So th this is a quite complex uh, uh, <coughs> alchemy, but uh, we will do it and maybe uh, Federico could complex uh, from the, the faculty side, how they organize all the content and be sure that the contents uh, corresponds to all these expectations. Yeah, the, the issue of uh, handling uh, or deciding what gets into a class or into a course is clearly one of the typical challenges. And device are several that are already included in our processes. So we already do it and we clearly we will do increasingly with the platform of Team Life that I just described because this should bring much more together the different stakeholders, either industry, either society, and clearly students and alumni. In that way, we create an innovation. Clearly, there is a dimension of scientific research because our professors are engaged into this and produce novel content, okay? So there are people that innovate by themselves on the subject matter. At the same time, we have to bring this knowledge into the applicability of it to the real context. And this can only be due on shared platform. If up until today, the main mechanism we, that we used was a, somehow a scientific committee for each class or by subject matter. So we will push on this, but at the same time, we will leave on top of team live interaction in order to innovate. Uh, and clearly, you see probably a little absent the market by itself, but we expect that uh, through team life, the market will be there too, in the sense of the very way you feel the needs and you tell us, hey, this is our needs. So the idea is that we more continuously be able to involve the real life, the society, the business need in order to shape our classes and courses. Professors are ready and are listening. And we, we have also two main indicators. Uh, we have the insertion rates for each cohort saying uh, on what kind of jobs they go, their salary, and if they are satisfied, and they definitely think that they, they were well prepared. Uh, and we have also another indicator, which is that every class uh, and every module is evaluated by the, by the students. And then it goes through the, de the departments, then they have an evaluation, then we have the final evaluation <coughs> with, with Federico. So we have different committees and we have different steps so it's a huge uh, and strong and implicated uh, quality insurance system. Thank you very much for that question, which was very long to respond to. I think we might one last question and all the other questions like Jean-Francois suggests will be answered by word link joined with uh, an email in the days to come with the replay of uh, this uh, conference. Chelsea, do we have one more question? Or maybe one comment. <laughs> sure, absolutely. So a lot of these things, a lot of the questions we touched on, thanks to your presentation, so thanks to all of the presenters. There's one that we didn't talk about a lot, so I'm going to choose that one. And like I said, we will definitely come back and share all of these in a Word document when we come back to you with the recording. We need more women in business and leadership roles. How is GEM furthering this crucial aspect? We, we have more, we have... Uh, in general, we have more female students than male students, but that depends on some programs. In the program Grand Ecole, we have more uh, more female. In some MSc or MBAs, that's not, not the same, but anyway, uh, at the global, we, we have more female. But what we said uh, that uh, they have the, all male and female have the same classes. 
they have the same assignments, uh, they have the, the same uh, exams, the, the candidates uh, and they apply for the same jobs. Uh, what we have states is that we, they, we have a difference of salary uh, when they enter to the job force. And so we have a strong action, and this is one of the society, uh, one goal of the Société Amission, is to help uh, all these women uh, to negotiate better salaries, uh, to trust in themselves, because it's, it's a question of uh, personal development. And uh, we think that it is also important to train male students, because they will be in a position of manager when they will be, they, they will be in companies, and that they can do the actors of change. Thank you very much for that answer. Bye, everyone. Bye -bye. I love to see you see soon. You.